The 2016 Philippine presidential election was won by Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. Hitler massacred three million Jews. Now, there is three million, there's a three million drug addict, there are. I'd be happy to slaughter him. In August 2016, the United Nations urged Rodrigo Duterte to stop promoting the unlawful killings of suspected drug users. In just three months, scores of people have been killed as a result of Duterte's extreme response to the war on drugs. Although this brutal rhetoric has shocked many outside of the Philippines, those who voted for Duterte point to widespread crime and drug addiction as issues only solvable by an aggressive leader. Duterte has singled out drug use as the primary enemy in his new regime. The president has been quoted encouraging people to kill drug users themselves as an alternative to calling the police. In just the three months following Duterte's election, 1,900 people and counting have been reportedly killed by police and vigilantes. In fact, the Philippines does suffer from a widespread drug problem. The most commonly used illegal drug is crystal methamphetamine, also called shabu. Many Filipino residents voted for Duterte because he promised to take a tough stance on the Philippines' drug war. In the United States, he has been directly compared to presidential candidate Donald Trump for his inflammatory and often inappropriate remarks. His popularity is not entirely surprising. As in the United States with Trump, many voters are tired of dynastic elite establishment candidates. The incumbent president was the son of the 11th Philippine president, and Duterte's leading opponent is the grandson of the fifth president. Under the last few presidents, crime has continued to be a major problem. Unlike Trump, Duterte is from a lower class background and relatively progressive on some social issues. He is openly pro-LGBT rights, and while mayor, he passed the first and only Women Development Code, which upholds women's civil rights and works to end discrimination. The Philippines is actually one of the most female-friendly countries in Southeast Asia, ranking seventh worldwide according to the Global Gender Gap Report. And besides his controversial remarks, Duterte has promised to be a dictator against evil as president, which includes abolishing Congress if they were to threaten impeachment and pardoning himself for mass murder. 91% of residents surveyed still support their new president. Who exactly is this Donald Trump of the East? Well, for the last two decades, Rodrigo Duterte has been the mayor of Davao City in southern Philippines. He was regularly known to ride his Harley Davidson motorcycle to patrol the city while carrying a 38 caliber handgun in his waistband. If elected, he would kill five criminals every week, which may not be an idle promise since... He has openly tolerated the killing of alleged criminals by an unauthorized death squad that patrols the city and has himself said that those committing illegal activity were legitimate targets of assassination. He does admit. They, they have killed. Three months uh, early on, I, 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 I killed about three people. <laughs> I'm sorry, about three people? His off-the-cuff remarks are legendary. At this mass wedding, Duterte offers himself as a gift to the young brides. It's called the Pope a son of a bitch, all of which has earned him a reputation as the Trump of the East. Duterte has seemed like he is trying to test the limits of basic human decency. On the campaign trail, he delivered a speech that was truly nauseating. He was the mayor of Davao when an Australian missionary was murdered and gang-raped in 1989 in the jail in Davao City, where he's still the mayor today. I was angry she was raped. Yes, that was one thing. But she was so beautiful. I think the mayor should have been first. What a waste. Any part of you is thinking, was that some kind of horrific joke? Please, no. It was not a joke. I said it in a narrative. I was not... Smiling. Incredibly, this man is leading in the polls by 11 points, so he's probably going to get elected president tomorrow, which isn't just terrifying for the Philippines, because it means that in just a year's time, we could be treated to this as an official state visit. While human rights groups have condemned his remarks and actions, Others agree that the Philippine justice system is inadequate to deal with dangerous crime. Just over 100 days into the presidency, why launch a brutal war on drugs? Because the sheer number of people contaminated. Drugs is a uh, spread, will pull my country down. You know, there is no crime at all, no law. When you threaten criminals with death, you destroy my country, I'll kill you. This is the law of my, my land. Here is a police. Here is a gangster. He's armed with an M16, the gangster only a pistol. But when they meet, they exchange fire. With the police with an M16, it's one bus, 
and hits 1,000 people there and they die. There's no criminal liability. It could not be negligence because you have to save your life. It could not be recklessness because you have to, to defend you. Just like when the United States and the rest of the country, when you bomb a village, you intend to kill the militants, but you kill in the process the children there. Then why is it it is a collateral damage to the West and to us? It is murder. Well, you can encourage good policing and you can encourage justice yes. and trust in the judicial system. Correct. But when I was campaigning as a president, the drug problem was already reaching by the millions. During my time, we have started to count. We are nearing now the 800 mark. I have a duty to preserve the generation. If it involves human rights, I don't give a shit. I have to strike fear because I have, I said, the enemies of the states are out there to destroy. But many around the world do not see extrajudicial murder as a solution.